featuring Mr. Nurhizam Ibrahim from Malaysian Investment Development Authority, MIDA. Currently, he is the director of the Advanced Technology and R&D Division. His role focuses on identifying trends, new and emerging technology, such as smart manufacturing, Industry 4.0, as well as new businesses suitable for Malaysia's industry and business ecosystem. Please welcome Mr. Norhiza. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yang berbahagia Datuk Khairil Anwar Ahmad, President and CEO of Iskandar Investment Berhad. Yang berusaha Dr. Khalid Abdul Hamid, Director Service Industry Division, Economic Planning Unit. Mr. Haris Hardi Zakaria, Chief Asset Management Officer of Iskandar Investment Berhad. Mr. Zulfika Zainuddin, Managing Director of IIB Venture, Sendra Mahat. Thank you for inviting uh, Maida for today's session on the glorious Iskandar Global Innovation and Technology Exchange Program or IGNITE 2021. I am Nur Hizam Ibrahim, uh, Director of Advanced Energy and R&D Division from Maida. And the topic today of my presentation is on Malaysia roaring to the next level leveraging on smart manufacturing and, and emerging technology-related investment opportunities. Before I start, allow me to give a bit of introduction of what is MIDA and what do we do. MIDA is crucial in transforming the industrial landscape since 1960s. We are the Malaysian government principal agency for the promotion of investment in the manufacturing and services sector in Malaysia. Our industrialization started in 1960s and during 1970s, we start having the presence of eight samurais focusing on export-oriented and labor-intensive uh, industry. Out of the transfer of technology from this uh, multinational we start having the expertise of our own and start developing the local ecosystem. Malaysia then focused on resource-based and heavy industries in 1980s. Realizing the importance of technology, our strategy would then focus on technology uh, intensive projects to be attracted to grow in the country. And from there, we are at what we are, we are today in focusing on services sector, digital economy, industry 4.0, and fourth industrial revolution kind of industry to be grown in the country. Before we go into details, these are the current international standing of why we or investors should consider Malaysia as the choice of uh, investment destination. According to CEO World Magazine, we are the first in terms of world best country to invest. According to Bloomberg in 2018, Malaysia is the most attractive emerging market in Asia. According, according to World Bank of Doing Business 2020 report, we are ranked second in the ease of doing business within ASEAN countries. Also, we are second in terms of protecting investors. So the numbers are there for you to check. And, but more importantly, there are numerous uh, industries in the country who keep on continuing to invest and enjoying uh, making money in the country. Okay. For MIDA, we also have presence in 20 overseas offices, mostly on the FDI originating countries. So what we do, we do promotion of uh, investment. And 
uh, the kind of promotion is example like what we have today. And upon getting the interest of potential project, we facilitate and ensure approval of projects. We look upon the manufacturing license, provision of tax incentive, expected post, and uh, consideration of import duty exemption. And not only that, once you invest in the country, we ensure you stay forever here in the country by providing our handholding activities. Uh, we also look at the ecosystem requirement for projects. So when you consider uh, investing in Malaysia, you could either uh, explore setting up a representative office or a regional office in the country, or probably uh, setting up a sales office. From there, upon getting the due diligence ready, market intelligence ready, that is after that, you can consider either setting up a principal hub or operational headquarters in the country, or setting up a production facility, or probably an R&D or competence center, or probably at least a training center to be set up in Malaysia. Okay. This is uh, how we elaborate further on our work and our structure. So like I mentioned just now, not only we promote foreign direct investment, we also ensure attraction and uh, growing our domestic investment. The kind of project that we look at, we can, uh, we can uh, look from the manufacturing perspective, uh, coming from the electrical and electronics industry, machinery and metal, building technology and lifestyle, transportation technology, chemical, food tech, life sciences and medical technology. And we also pay emphasis on services projects, uh, the oil, uh, oil and gas, maritime and logistic services, the green tech players, the healthcare, education and hospitality, business services and regional operation, and also advanced energy, technology and R&D. Upon convincing projects to be set up in the country, we also provide facilitation in terms of your ecosystem requirement. If you require industry, talent management and support services, we have dedicated uh, division to ensure requirement of the industry is well taken care of from the talent perspective. Also on the implementation of the project, we also have our MIDA state officers ready to ensure and handhold projects to uh, completely implement it without having any difficulty in the country. We have tariff division ensuring uh, approval of a custom duty exemption to ensure uh, you have the best cost of doing business in the country. Okay, as been mentioned, among our prime role is to attract FDI in targeted sectors. This may be in high tech, knowledge intensive, with all the parameters contributing to the nation, nation economic development. Having said that, we also ensure the equal growth of our domestic investment in order to be part of the bigger supply chain or to be transformed to be a regional or global leaders. Now, all this is being done with a goal in mind to ensure a balanced regional development and shared prosperity to all states. When MIDA attract or target investment projects, our priority will be of those of quality projects with the best economic spillover benefits to the country. Not only Malaysia welcomes projects that increase our economic complexity, but this has to be done in the intended with creating high value jobs to the people. At the same time, we also want the projects to also be connected with our local supply chain, uh, our local supply chain network, and also ecosystem enablers to ensure long-term inclusivity and sustainability to all parties. In general, quality investment could be looked at at manufacturing products or services that has these features, namely having high technology, high value added, strong linkages with domestic industries, high capital intensive projects, 
and high integration of R&D design in the project. This will give uh, later on high income jobs to the rakyat, creating uh, gross national uh, GNI impact. Uh, also focusing on export oriented, skill intensive and knowledge intensive uh, kind of project. With the advent of Industry 4.0 or Smart Manufacturing, projects that were deemed brownfield or no longer under the radar of investment attraction are now being given a new lease of life. Those manufacturing or services investment projects having mass scalable Industry 4.0 footprint are also back in our radar. So we encourage uh, investment projects having integration of all the Industry 4.0 uh, elements or industry 4.0 pillars to be embedded in your manufacturing or services project. So do consider having big data analytics, AI, AR, VR, uh, mixed reality, cybersecurity, advanced material, additive manufacturing or 3D printing, uh, complete system integration, autonomous robot, IIoT, and cloud computing to be part and parcel of your operation in setting up the projects in the country. So when we talk about uh, attraction of quality projects, what is more important is the value creation of that project. Normally, we look at projects that have high technology coupled with high uh, integration of R&D and research and development and design and innovation. When you couple together with fourth IR or industry 4.0 technology, this will normally create new value creation in that project, or at least element of value addition to your products and services. Why is it important? Because of by having these two elements, we will have creating a new quality project that have a high integration of uh, uh, value to that project. For example, in terms of industrial technology, projects that have, uh, for example, engineering services, when you couple with uh, Industry 4.0, it will be bringing that project to the next level. And for example, in terms of, uh, I'm just giving an example. Yeah. All these healthcare projects or welfare pro projects, for example, where we used to have, uh, uh, for example, elderly care. It used to be a normal service, but with the integration of 4.0, with all the IIoT monitoring, remote surveillance and whatnot, this kind of services project could be bring up to the next level. And also, you know, when we address projects that have uh, what we term as 3D or 4D, all these dirty, dangerous, demeaning and dark kind of project, with that integration of uh, 4.0 technology and high integration of R&D, we can actually put make this kind of project more attractive in addressing our talent to work in the sector. You know, we have the situation where most of these 3D projects are most likely dependent on foreign labor. But with the new kind of 4.0 integration, these, you know, these kind of projects or this kind of work and industry and sector will start to attract our local uh, local talent to work together in this, in this sector. So that is what I meant by having the elements of high tech and R&D coupled with fourth IR and industry 4.0, it will create new value creation or at least new value addition to the product and services. And this will bring the value to our investment in the country. Okay, before we go into the uh, uh, further into the kind of project that we look at, uh, please take note that Malaysia has recently introduced the National Fourth IR Policy with the purpose to see the growth opportunities arising from, from Fourth Industrial Revolution. Also, we intend, the, the country intend to create a conducive ecosystem to cope with Fourth IR. And by doing this, we we'll build trust in inclusive digital society. With fourth IR, it will create new business opportunities. It will create new value creation. 
increase efficiency and productivity gains, transform uh, jobs, improve work-life balance, and create new job creation. Okay, in relation to attraction of new and emerging technology as a base of investment attraction criteria, uh, we would like to introduce the Malaysia 10 by 10 Science, Technology, Innovation and Economy Framework formulated by Malaysia Academy of Science as our new investment strategies for Malaysia Economic Recovery Plan by design for 12 Malaysia Plan and beyond. With the usage of this framework, Malaysia shall also focus on projects having any of the science and technology drivers as seen in the uh, y-axis. We promote bioscience technology, neurotechnology, blockchain investment, augmented analytics and, da and data discovery, sensor technology, 4D and 5D printing, advanced material, and whatnot. And with this, it is hoped that the investment in this area will spur the Malaysian socio-economic in relation to economy, energy, business and financial services, medical and healthcare, smart cities and transportation, water and food in relation to our uh, security, food security, agriculture, forestry, education, environment, and biodiversity. Next opportunity arises from the opportunities in hydrogen economy. Hydrogen, hydrogen economy refers to the uh, vision of using hydrogen as a low carbon energy source, replacing, for example, gasoline as a transport fuel or natural gas as a heating fuel. Hydrogen is attractive because whether it is burned or to produce heat or reacted with air in a fuel cell, they will produce electricity with the only with the only byproduct which is water opportunities for malaysia in hydrogen economy would be in the uh, in the in the what do you call that uh, upper value stream of uh, hydrogen uh, creation from alkali electro, uh, uh, you know uh, in the blue hydrogen, green hydrogen, pink hydrogen, gray hydrogen, but there are types of uh, hydrogen creation that would be of uh, our focus priority. Uh, we are, Malaysia is currently uh, in the midst of uh, coming out with our hydrogen economy roadmap. So we welcome opportunities for Malaysia in hydrogen economy in, uh, in the module system, hydrogen creation, hydrogen production, hydrogen transportation, storage, generators, converters, uh, hydrogen fuel cells to the uh, to the end part of uh, fuel cell station and also application site in the mobility and hydrogen vehicles. Malaysia has a total coastline of 4,700 kilometers combination of both peninsula and East Malaysia. The coastal zone of Malaysia has special socio-economic significance. If we look at the existing sector, we are already leveraging on uh, coastal tourism, marine living resources, uh, non-living resources, uh, port activities, shipbuilding and repair, maritime transport. But there are also emerging sectors that we welcome. For example, in the areas of water desalinization, blue economy, blue bioenergy, Maritime Defy and Marine Minerals. So the focus could be on the imaging sectors while also enhancing further the more established sector in the blue economy. In relation to the interest in space economy, this will be a long short focus for the country taking advantage of the country's location over the equatorial region, it is naturally that there are interests in promoting the economy. Projects in space economy could leverage on established manufacturing ecosystem already in Malaysia 
to the, for example, in the electronic ecosystem, aerospace, machinery, that would add advantage and attraction of such uh, projects in the country. The concept of circular economy is equally important to be integrated in any potential investment project. It could deliver benefits such as reducing pressure on the environment and also uh, on the uh, uh, improving the security and supply of raw material and also increasing the competitiveness and stimulating innovation while doing this, boosting the economic growth and creating jobs. While integrating integration of Industry 4.0 is crucial in ensuring business survival, holistic adoption of circular economy will ensure the longevity of not only to the business community, but also to our livelihood as well. In Ensuring successful implementation of uh, industry forward policy, MIDA encouraged interest from industry 4.0 system integrators and solution providers to explore setting up your base in the country. We would also welcome the project ideally to be in the form of center of excellence, providing combination of all the services offering as shown uh, in the slide. For example, having industrial training and development, centralized information and knowledge and sharing of the best industry sharing platform. Having facilities for incubators for startup companies and technopreneurs. Having elements of R&D in the, in the uh, establishment. Providing business support and development. Providing technical support and consultation. And also showcasing the state-of-the-art technologies and platform. To recap, MIDA as your business partner, not only we uh, attract a project to set up uh, projects in the country, but also we ensure the kind of support to ensure your project implementation to also benefit all parties. We can also provide the facilitation to you uh, in terms of R&D and Industry 4.0 support. Uh, connectivity with the ecosystem partners. We can also do the talent and human capital support to your projects. On top of that, in terms of business and post-investment support, that is also part and parcel of MIDA function. And least but not least, we also have incentive to sweeten the deal in considering Malaysia as your investment destination. Now, this is uh, just a snapshot of Industry 4.0 universe in the country. There are situations where such manufacturing or services project doesn't require much R&D in their business model. Nevertheless, technology adoption and diffusion are particularly, particularly important for industries due to the enormous economic potential of Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 has the potential to transform businesses in multiple ways in terms of product, uh, improving productivity, efficiency and cost, enhancing the uh, organization management and production capabilities, enabling better quality and monitoring, and developing innovation and producers of Industry 4.0 technologies. This slide illustrates the comprehensive R&D ecosystem in the country. The entire ecosystem of R&D are supported by banks and financial institutions, government entities, research universities, R&D accelerators and incubators, our global partners, as well as certification and accreditation bodies. In Malaysia, we have both public and private institutions that are carrying out research in various fields of research, such as natural sciences, engineering and technology, biotechnology, ICT, medical and health sciences, agriculture and forestry, and, the area, and also in the areas of economy. 
We also have center of excellence that support research institutions by offering shared facilities of multiple disciplines to industry players. Do talk with us for us to pitch the interest and enhance collaboration between industries and the center of excellence in the country. Uh, now we also like to talk on initiative to make Malaysia as a digital hub. Malaysia has recently launched the Malaysia Digital Economy Blueprint uh, with the target to increase uh, digital economy contribute to 22.6% of Malaysia GDP, provide 500,000 job opportunities by 2025 and increasing the number of tech startups or startups to 5,000. So if leveraged fully, digital transformation can create impact of up to 252 billion in annual economic value. And also, uh, this is sourced from alpha beta analysis made for Google in, uh, uh, for this year. Transformative technologies with economic potential can derive from all these technology pillars from cloud computing, big data, AI, IoT, additive manufacturing, advanced robotics, and fintech. So the economic development can be spurred by all these technologies and benefiting cross-cutting sectors. So we welcome uh, digital projects to come and consider Malaysia as your uh, place. So these are the uh, some of the digital technologies uh, and the type of application that can be applied cross-cutting sectors in the country. Okay, but uh, looking at uh, looking at the potential of this economic value, actually, uh, if you look here, about twenty percent of economic opportunity from digital technologies could be accrued from the manufacturing sector. That is from the manufacturing, manufacturing sector alone. Uh, look at all the rest of the sector. Each of each and uh, equally of this sector, there are tremendous economic opportunity. And by 2030, digital technology could support up to 257 billion of annual economic impact to the country. Having said this, MIDA together with MDEC has recently uh, created Digital Investment Office. And this is a collaborative platform acting to coordinate, assess, advise, and facilitate all digital investment, uh, be it from foreign and domestic into the country. The role of Digital Investment Office is consistent with my digital blueprint and the national investment aspiration guided by the essence of the Shared Prosperity Vision 2030. Uh, with this uh, establishment of Digital Investment Office, we intend to target and attract about 70 billion of investment in digitalization by 2025. Malaysia has a rich pool of digital companies. We look forward to have more in the countries. To conclude, Malaysia is an ideal investment destination in technology sector. But make no mistake that quality investment includes also adoption of highly scalable industry 4.0 operation model in your uh, in, 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 in